the key for success with lettuces is to water them. If you let them dry out, they're not going to like it. They cannot tolerate dry conditions. So you must make sure to have a regular schedule of watering. You don't want to overwater them, but with lettuce, you do want to go a little bit more than usual. If there is one plant I have had great success growing, it must be lettuce. It could be that the soil and climate of all my gardens have been specially suited to its cultivation, or it just happens to be one of the easiest crops to grow. In any case, my experience has been positive. I never had any lettuce crop develop a disease, and the only pests to have bothered them slightly in the past have been slugs, which soon disappeared as I started to mulch my garden beds. Timing is key with growing them, as is watering. Knowing just how much to water, it's a skill, but it's not a difficult one. It's something you pick up as you garden. I can usually look at a soil and tell if it's too, too dry, but if you're unsure, just use your finger. Just get your finger, stick it in the soil, and see if it's moist to the touch. If it is, then there's enough water. If it's not, you should add water. Now, the problem is, if you add too much water, you can cause root rot, and that's never a good thing. But in my experience, lettuce is a little bit harder to, to kill by overwatering, especially if there is a good drainage to whatever, either the container or the, the bed you're planting them in. It is much easier to kill lettuce or have it stunt and not produce well by not providing enough water. They don't like to be stressed out by drying, especially when they are tiny seedlings with shallow roots. Letting them dry out at this stage can prove fatal. In fact, they are a shallow rooted crop and therefore need a constant supply of water to produce an abundance of large, crispy and tender leaves. They do appreciate a bit of nitrogen boost. That is why I've made sure to kill two birds with one stone by top dressing them once or twice a week with a thin layer of fresh grass clippings during the growing season. This feeds them and retains the water close to the roots. But while they are still tiny seedlings, you want them to be free from mulch overhead so they don't die trying to merge. That is why growing them in cups in potting soil first and then transplanting them out is a good strategy. Here sipping some nettle leaf tea to hopefully help with my allergy symptoms but I am ready to go plant the lettuce outside. I prepared a second bed and filled it up with soil and now all I have to do is to transplant the lettuce seedlings that are waiting in the cups. And unlike other more finicky plants, lettuce doesn't mind being transplanted once the time comes. Since I had started this new garden about a month later than what would be ideal, I had to rush a bit and get these transplants in the ground. Part of the reason why I had even started these seedlings in cups instead of directly in the ground was because I was getting the second bed ready to be planted. The lettuce is ready to be transplanted, although they're kind of small, but I see many roots coming from the bottom. So the cups did work, however, I think either the container is a bit too small for all of these or there are too many of them in each. So I might in the future just plant one seed. Of course this time I didn't pre-germinate as I usually do. That way I couldn't just put one seed and maybe hope for it to, to work. At least it was a place where I could hold the seeds and jumpstart their growth before I had the bed finished, but once since I have the bed already finished, now it's just a matter of going there and planting. I had put them in a sheltered space outside, unlike my usual indoor setup with artificial lights in higher temperatures. They had not grown as big, but I felt they would look better once transplanted. My usual timeline to grow the first lettuce in springtime starts around late February to early March. That is about four weeks before our last frost date. That is when I usually start them indoors in separate cups, transplanting them when they grow several pairs of larger leaves. 
transplanting larger plantlets usually give them more of a fighting chance outdoors. I'll be back right after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. Barring the fact that the cups may have been either too small for the amount of seeds I planted or I put too many seeds in the cup, I think this has worked beautifully. I will definitely continue doing this. What I'm doing here is I'm planting the clumps of lettuce sort of in groups. That's gonna help me when um, mulching, it's gonna be easier. And since this is more of a cut and come again salad um, style, I think this is gonna be easy for me just to pick the leaves or cut with the scissors and harvest this. Of course, this group of of lettuce will be harvested soon. Um, I'm sure it's gonna really grow now that the temperatures are starting to get warmer. Once I see that it's already past its prime, something else is gonna go into these beds because these beds are gonna be a high yielding bed system. I can't let anything that's not yielding a lot of salad greens or fruit to stay here for long. Now, I wish I had found some mugs. I think mugs would have been a bit better. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any of those ugly mugs. Mugs would have been closer in size to my previous disposable plastic cup setup, which did work wonderfully, allowing the roots more room to grow. But the main issue was that I had sown this batch in the end of April, and since we were in the beginning of May, I had to be quick in getting them to the ground before summer kicked in. But because this was a very sunny location, I was confident the plants would zoom up in no time once planted. I suppose one disadvantage to this is storage. If you don't have much storage space, it will be kind of a hassle to house all the cups. But since I do, it's not a problem for me. Plastic cups obviously can be nestled one on top of the other. That doesn't mean that you couldn't necessarily find either earthenware um, pots that are glazed and would act like plastic. It'd be probably much more um, durable than just porcelain because porcelain is more brittle and can probably break and they could nestle. So it's possible to live without plastic. There are a few additional considerations if you want to grow lettuce successfully. The best soil to grow them in will have a slightly acidic pH of 6 to 6.5. I personally don't bother measuring pH since I rather take the intuitive route and frankly this is not a production farm or market garden. But since young compost tends to have a slightly acidic pH, adding that to the soil will always be welcome. That is probably why my lettuce loves to be mulched with fresh grass clippings. Ever since I discovered that I could collect grass clippings and use them as mulch, it has made this otherwise mundane chore more bearable. The key to success with fresh grass clippings is to apply it often but in thin layers. That allows the grass to dry up a bit. If it happens to be raining a lot, mulching with fresh grass clippings can become a bit trickier since it tends to mat up and mold into a foul-smelling, slimy mess. You don't want that to happen. In that case, wood chips work better. But grass clippings provide extra nitrogen that leafy greens just love. Perhaps layering grass clippings with drier, carbon-rich material, lasagna style, would give the best of both worlds. But since I have plenty of grass to mow, I use what I have at hand, and it works well for me. I'm sure to have a lot of lettuce in just a few weeks. I'm willing to bet that's the case because I made sure to find the perfect spot for lettuce. And the thing is, you need to have a place that has sun, but not too much sun, because lettuce doesn't like, especially afternoon sun. So on this side of the house, I have sun exposure from around 
7 a.m. up until 1 p.m., 2 p.m. That's when the shadow of the house starts to shade the side of the, the yard. But that's the perfect timing because at that stage of the day, the light is just too intense and the temperature has built up. So lettuce prefers morning light. I just need to keep it mulched and well watered and I should have a, a bountiful harvest. If you'd like to know how these turn out, remember to watch my upcoming episodes. See you then.